Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And today we're gonna to be going through a full day of eating and I'm gonna be covering off the typical mistakes I see when people are trying to mass and build muscle. And I cover those off for you. So I am Steve Hall. I am the founder of Vive Stronger. We are a coaching company that has helped hundreds of people gain muscle, lose fat, take the bodybuilding stage, or even just do photo shoots. And today I'm gonna to give you some of the tips that we provide our clients to help them go through that process. So let's get on with it. So meal number one is always a combination of some sort of cereals. So I'm gonna have some frosted shreddies and I'm gonna have probably some of these honey nut flakes as well. I'm on a lot of carbohydrates and uh, we're gonna have some of this peptide protein powder from CMP. As you'll see with almost every meal, I also have some fruits or veggies. So at the moment, I'm gonna have some frozen blueberries and banana with this meal. Did you notice? You're the star of show, girl. And you know it, got my focus. Don't care about what your girlfriends get into. Cause tonight I wanna be with you. Oh, only you. Yeah, yeah. Baby, come party with me. And we'll be dancing to your heartbeat. And now my friends say I'm in too deep. But they don't know that. So one of the first mistakes I see people making is they are focused on lean gains and staying lean whilst massing. And unfortunately, what that tends to lead to is not much of anything. So first of all, they're worried about having to start massing from a really lean state. And they think that that's gonna maybe improve partitioning ratios, P ratios, that doesn't seem to be the case. And they may try and struggle to get leaner than what they even feel they're best at. And really, if you don't feel great, are you gonna be able to perform very well in the gym? Probably not. And then also they hyper-focus on gaining as slow as like maybe the rate limiting gain of muscle or just very, very slowly. So they're trying to gain only muscle and you can't choose where your body gains weight. It will, it, you can't dictate if it's gonna gain purely muscle or purely fat or what have you. You can do many things to stack in your favor, like having good sleep, um, kind of paying attention to some elements of nutrient timing, maybe even small things like chrono nutrition. But these are very, very minor things that you can do. The main thing you can do for kind of helping nutrient partitioning is not being excessive of a surplus, making sure you're resistance training. They're the main things you're gonna be able to do to make sure that you're improving kind of your partitioning ratio as much as you possibly can. So I think people hyper-focus on that and they end up really not really gaining anything and they kind of just spin their wheels. I think about gaining muscle like cycling uphill. It's very, very challenging. And if you're kind of at maintenance, you are kind of maybe got the break on slightly. Whereas in a surplus, you've got that break off and you're much more able to climb that mountain, which is muscle gain, which is a hard process. And the fat that comes alongside it is kind of the cost of doing business. For every guinea, there's a gotcha. For the fact that you're gonna gain some muscle at a really good and reasonable pace, you're going to sacrifice the fact that you're going to gain some fat tissue. But if you look at every single successful bodybuilder, they go into surpluses. They go through massing phases, cutting phases, and that's because that's the most efficient route to gaining and getting a big and muscular physique. Not to say there isn't times to trying to attempt body recomposition. But for most of us, if you really wanna gain some muscle, you wanna enter a mass phase, you wanna be gaining between one to 2% per month, somewhere in or around that. Puts you in a really nice surplus that's gonna fuel everything that you want. And here, I'm just sipping on 10 grams of EAAs, 20 grams of dextrose, five grams of creatine, a little bit of salt and water. You guys, so I'm now sat here for my post-workout and uh, this is, I'm just having a bowl of cereal. This is Cheerios. I normally would have a lower fiber cereal. This is a fair bit of fiber, this is 100 grams of Cheerios. I'd normally have like a Cocoa Pops or some sort of rice-based cereal or another like, uh, I don't know, more kid cereal, ones uh, lower in fiber. I'd normally have 150 grams, but as some of you might know, Fridays are the day me and Charlotte get a takeaway, and that's always like a 1, thousand, thousand five hundred calories. So I save some calories for that. And with that, I am just having another protein shake. This is CMP Sticky Toffee Pudding, but by the way, is really good. Steep 15 for 15% off all CMP products. 
I think we're just European slash actually maybe just UK based at the moment. So you have to bear with me, US and uh, my wider abroad followers, if you did want to try that. But there's lots of tasty whey protein on the market, right? But this one's particularly good, especially if you like sticky toffee pudding. So yeah, I'm going to sit down and have this. So something some people try and do when they're massing is they forget about calories and they're just like, got to eat big to get big and they just stuff themselves, especially post cut where the appetite is super high and the body is kind of wanting to get back to that baseline that it was before in terms of body fat, it wants to regain that. And you have to be really careful, especially in that transitional period. But then some people just have big appetites, right? And so they end up just way overeating. Sure, you want to be in a surplus, but like you have tasty food now, not that this is the tastiest cereal out there, Pascal might disagree, but when you have the, the kind of food that we have available nowadays, if you just go by what you want to feel in terms of appetite, you can quickly overeat depending on your food selection. So I think it's a bad idea just to like eat big to get big and you have to be careful about how much you're gaining. So I talked about people wanting to stay too lean, which is to one extreme. You also don't want to go to the other extreme and just think, I oh, eat big to get big bro and pound on the weight. And both that first scenario where staying lean and this second scenario, and actually all the mistakes that I'm talking about today are things I have done wrong. And I'm telling you, not only are these things that I see with my clients doing wrong and people out there, maybe some of you, but also myself, I've been through them. And not only are my anecdotal experiences backing this up, also my client experiences, also just within the literature, you can't, the more you eat isn't, you don't linearly gain more muscle the more you eat. You do to a point, but you also exponentially gain body fat at some point. So there's this sweet spot, which I talked about before, which is that one to 2% additional body weight per month. So don't think kind of eat big to get big. Yes, but kind of eat on a, can I say appropriate <laughs> amount to gain at an appropriate rate so that you maximize muscle gain and minimize fat gain whilst maximizing kind of muscle gain. We're not gaining the minimum amount of fat possible because that will unnecessarily restrict the muscle gains we could make. So that's my second one to avoid. Avoid the kind of eat big to get big and just thinking uh, my mistake was I thought if I eat just clean food, I'll gain just clean weight, muscle. But you can eat a shed load of calories in terms of things like dried fruits. Um, I'm thinking nutrient dense foods, but also calorie dense foods. So things people think of as clean, you think of like olives, olive oil, you think of avocado, you think of nuts, seeds, these sort of things. Your calories, granola is one that lots of people talk about, uh, nut butters in particular. You can pound those down. You have thousands of calories and suddenly be in a huge surplus, gaining lots of body fat, despite it being quote unquote, clean, nutrient dense food. So you have to be careful about controlling calories. So avoid that mistake. So I've just come downstairs after being on a podcast for about two hours with Eric Trexler. That's actually happened the last two Fridays. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of podcasts coming out of Eric. And we're just talking about hard gainers. And I would put myself in that category of kind of hard gainer of being resistance to weight gain. And uh, I'll have to do a vlog of that at some point. But that might give you some insights into some of my food decisions from today, at least, or what I can get away with. So I've just come down because I haven't eaten since post-workout which was around just gone midday, it's now five o'clock. And so I need to get some food in. So I've just made this meal, I guess. It's kind of not a meal, it's very convenient. I've also got a consultation call in about 20 minutes, so I need to get this down. I've eaten half a pepper and a tomato, so you know that, and then I've got the rest of this to get down. So here, as you can see, I've got some Greek yogurt. So this was half filled. So I had that with a scoop of protein powder. So it was actually that CMP toffee protein powder again. I've got a kind of fruit bar in there. So it's mostly dates with nuts. And then I've got a whole banana in there. And then I have some grapes, so a portion of grapes. And then I'm going to have one Pop-Tart as well. Just not toasted, just eat it as it is. So I thought as I've just got back from a dog walk with Ada, I could talk about, and we're waiting for my final meal of the day, which is gonna be Domino's. Basically, Domino's pizza, it's gotta be my favorite takeaway. And we get that one week, and then the next week it's Charlotte's. 
choice. So normally it's some sort of vegan burger type of thing or something along those lines. So basically alternates between Domino's and then some vegan burger. So the next one that I wanted to talk about relates to some of the things we've already spoken about where it's very body weight and body composition, body fat focused. And whilst the goal of a massing phase is to grow muscle, right? You think that should be the focus. The problem is as a natural bodybuilder, especially someone who's been training for a number of years, you're gaining muscle at such a slow pace to focus on whether or not you're gaining muscle doesn't really help you. And so if you're really focused on your body weight all the time and you, how your physique's looking, you can kind of get a bit disheartened because ultimately you're more than likely going to be gaining more fat than muscle as you go forward. So if anything's changing, it's generally your waist is looking slightly bigger and you're looking a bit softer. Now you don't want to be going too aggressively as I've already spoken about. So it shouldn't be changing in a large way every time, but don't focus so much on that and focus on performance in the gym. The reason for that is Performance in the gym and the, the training that you're doing in the gym is quite literally the match that lights the fire for muscle gain. You could eat perfectly. You could have the best macro profile ever. You could nail your nutrient timing. You could be in the perfect surplus, perfect. But if you aren't training, it's like throwing gasoline on the floor. There's no fire that's gonna light there, right? You have gotta have the ignition. You've got to have the match that lighting is lighting it and sparking it. And you throw that on there and something's going to happen. You're going to get a big old fire. And just like in the same way, you're going to gain muscle. Nutrition is just permissive of the training that you're doing in the gym. So focus on the fact that you're performing well. You feel energized and your performance is going up. That should be the focus. And that's the mistake people make in a mass phase. They focus too much on what this is doing and not enough on what you're doing in the gym and performance. Hopefully this Domino's ain't going to be too long. Uh, it's later than I would like. It's going to come. It's going to be delicious. It's going to be particularly delicious because I'm actually a little bit hungry, which is always a good thing in a mass. The goods have arrived. So here, I always get the same. You Again, people might know. I get this very regularly. This is Domino's Classic Crust. I get the lower fat cheese, which is just lower fat and higher in protein. It's actually got tons of protein, this whole thing. And I get the um, veggie supreme. So it's just a bunch of veggies on there and double sauce. You've got to get the double sauce because they never put enough sauce on there. And I don't actually have this. This is yeah, it's quite a, it's like a bit of a calorie bomb and mostly fats. So guys, you saw my dominoes, which I very much enjoyed. And I just want to finish off this vlog with the final thing to avoid when massing and that is losing all of your structure that you had during your cut what i mean by that is mostly nutritional timing to a certain extent food composition so i can liken this to an analogy of like money when you are kind of restricted with the amount you can spend you're very careful about how you spend it and what you do with it when you have a lot of excess you maybe get much more frivolous and aren't as good with your money and if you aren't careful that can actually cause you just to be in a really bad position because you think you just have limitless amounts maybe and that can lead to some unwanted outcomes so you want to use a lot of what you had when you were restricted with money to use that money at its best and that's the same with when you're cutting and dieting you know you have to be careful about the food composition and nutrient timing of your meals and you don't want to lose all of that when you have more calories because that will suddenly lead to unwanted results so for example you make sure in a cut to prioritize fruit veg stay satiated and spread your protein throughout the day to maximize muscle protein synthesis and maximize muscle retention and prioritize carbohydrates around your training all those sort of things those equally apply to your mass gaining phase and you have to do it in your cut to maintain muscle but to grow as much muscle as possible you also want to apply that to your off season or your improvement season your mass gaining phases super duper important because ultimately the match that lights the fire for muscle gain is your training. So you have to do that. The two problems that kind of come in if you lose all of the structure that you had during dieting is that potentially you overeat, which we've already kind of covered. And also you potentially just don't fuel your training as well as it could have been, or you don't spread your protein through the day. And so you miss out on opportunities to maximize growth essentially. And so whilst my food composition looks quite different because I'm having to have more palatable foods, uh, because I'm on a large amount of calories, 
that kind of depends person to person that the people on much more calories are going to be able to eat a little bit more like I do but if you're not uh, I guess in some ways some people would call it fortunate I'm not sure I would term it that but if you aren't on as many as I am in terms of calories you can't suddenly just do what I am doing and you have to keep that kind of structure that you had during your cut and I certainly had to as I transitioned further into my mass so particularly food composition at the start of your mass you're going to have to keep similar structure to your diet but then in terms of nutrient timing mine is very very similar especially like the composition of my foods and meals sorry in terms of macros so I'm prioritizing carbohydrates around training I'm spreading my protein throughout the day there's still things that I'm doing to maximize training performance to maximize muscle protein synthesis to maximize my muscle growth so that's the thing to avoid don't lose all your structure because you're just fine your training isn't as good as it should be you potentially will overeat you just won't grow as much muscle as you should so guys hopefully you've enjoyed this hopefully you've taken home uh, lots of bits and pieces that are going to help maximize your muscle growth if you do struggle still with this and you would like more advice and help remember at revive stronger we are an online coaching company and so that is what we do on a daily basis is helping people grow muscle maximize muscle growth that sort of thing so if you'd like help and support with that definitely check out our coaching you'll be able to find that in the description below and also if you did enjoy this like always do kind of like it comment below if you have any questions or concerns about things anything you'd like to see in future and if you aren't already get yourself subscribed so guys i'll leave this here and i'll talk to you in the next one take care